So far, you've learned about a number of different controllers, each one designed to solve a different problem. And yet none of them will help you create a scalable distributed database. This is because distributed databases are often stateful in nature, while controllers like deployments and jobs are stateless. That brings up a question. What's the difference between the terms stateful and stateless in this context? Let me try and explain using the popular pets versus cattle analogy. Pretend that you're a cattle rancher. From your perspective, cattle are just a commodity. This means that one cow can be exchanged with a different cow of equal weight and health. Furthermore, cattle are identified by something like a number instead of a name. My point is that cattle are valuable to you, but interchangeable for all intents and purposes. In addition to your herd of cattle, you also have a pet dog. She's an English bulldog named Tinkerbull, and you and your family love her lots. What sets her apart from your cows is the fact that, one, she has a name, and two, she isn't replaceable, even if someone offers you another English bulldog of equal weight and health. Stateless controllers treat pods like cattle. For instance, the pods in a deployment all have randomly generated names. Therefore, a pod's name is not memorable, which makes it little more than a unique identifier. That's okay because a deployment's pods are just a bunch of copies. We can treat them as such because the pods do not need to maintain any information or state beyond a pod restart. That's the key. And it's incredibly handy because when one pod goes down, the deployment can quickly replace it with a new pod of equal weight and health, of course. This is what I mean when I call these pods stateless. However, some kinds of applications, like distributed databases, require stateful pods. These pods maintain their identity and storage even when they're evicted and then replaced. This is only possible with the help of a new kind of controller. Originally, it was called a pet set, but now it's called a stateful set. A stateful set is a type of pod controller with three key characteristics. First, a stateful set pod always maintains its identity even after it gets rescheduled. Second, the pods are deployed, scaled, and deleted in a guaranteed order. Third, every pod gets its own stable storage. This is what sets a stateful set apart from all other stateless pod controllers. Clearly, there's more to be said about these three quick bullet points, so let's go over each one in more detail. When a replica set creates a pod, it gives the new pod a name. The name is the combination of the controller's name and some random letters. For example, the MyBlog replica set creates pods named MyBlog dash random random random. As you now know, when we delete one of these pods, the replica set will create a replacement. Most importantly for this conversation, the replacement pod has a different name. That's an example of an unstable pod identity. Stateful sets create pods with stable identities. Each pod name is the combination of the stateful set's name and an ordinal number, i.e. a number in a sequence. For example, Let's say that you have a stateful set named Snowflake with three pods. Then those pods are guaranteed to be named Snowflake-0, Snowflake-1, and Snowflake-2. If you use the delete command to melt Snowflake-1 out of existence, then the stateful set will create a new pod named, you guessed it, Snowflake-1. That's an example of stable pod identity. Here's where having a stable identity becomes important. Every pod has a host name. By default, a pod's host name is the same as its name. I haven't gone over this until now because a host name will only last as long as that pod runs. That's one of the reasons why we put a service in front of a group of pods. But since stateful set pods have a stable name, they also have a stable host name. In other words, stateful pods have a stable network identity. That's huge. Because the host name never changes, 
You can communicate with a program running on the host, Snowflake One, even if the pod gets rescheduled. Here's an important implementation detail. A stateful set uses a headless service to provide the stable network identity to its pods. Keep in mind that you are responsible for creating the headless service for a stateful set. Since that's the case, let's briefly go over what a headless service is. Stateful sets deploy, scale, and delete the pods that they manage in a guaranteed order. Here's how it all works. A stateful set deploys and scales up pods in order according to their name. Therefore, the zeroth pod will be created first. Then when it's completely running and ready, the first pod will be created. Then the second, then the third, and so on. When a stateful set scales down or deletes a pod, it does so in reverse order. This means that a stateful set will first delete pod n-1. Then when that's completely terminated, it will delete pod n-2, and so on. Note that there are two additional guarantees. First, before a new pod can be created as part of a scaling operation, all of its predecessor pods must be running. For instance, say that you have a stateful set with three pods. If pod 1 just terminated, then you'll have to wait for it to be replaced before the stateful set will scale up. The second guarantee is similar to the first, but it applies to scale down operations. Before a pod can be terminated, all of its successor pods must already be terminated. On the other hand, stateless pod controllers provide no guarantees about the order in which pods are deployed, scaled, or deleted. Earlier in this course, you learned that a deployment's pods all mount the exact same volume. In fact, every stateless pod controller has the exact same behavior. That's because each pod is created from the exact same template. But this is often not the behavior that you want for stateful applications. What you really want is for each pod to have its own independent persistent storage. That's the reason why each stateful set pod gets its own persistent volume. But wait! There's more. If a pod gets rescheduled, the associated persistent volume gets remounted to the replacement pod. For instance, say that pod number 3 gets evicted and a replacement gets scheduled to another node. Then the replacement pod will mount the exact same persistent volume. That's what I mean when I say that a stateful pod has stable storage. Note that this behavior is only possible thanks to the fact that stateful set pods have a stable identity.